الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته welcome brothers and sisters to another installment of our light study of selected hadith from riyadh al-salihin and today we'll be looking at hadith number 42 in our study uh, and that is the hadith of ibn abbas رضي الله عنه i'm sorry رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نعمتان مقبول فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ رواه البخاري رحمه الله تعالى. So Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه he says in this hadith uh, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said there are نعمتان there are two advantageous circumstances or two blessings which are squandered by many people. They are good health and free time, and the hadith was collected by Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala. So now if you remember when we first started commenting on the hadith from the Bab of Al-Mujahada, the chapter of striving in Al-Hathanawiyu's Riyadh Salihin, the first hadith we took was the hadith of the Hurairah, in which Allah, it's a Qudsi hadith in which the Prophet said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ عَادَلِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ that whoever shows hostility or enmity or hatred towards a wali of mine, then I have declared war against him. Ila akhir hadith. So in that hadith, that previous hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he incentivized for us. He incentivized and mujahada. He basically told us what we stand to gain. What's in it for us if we engage in this mujahada, this striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he encouraged us thereby to engage in it, right? To be actively mujahideen, right? Striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned in that hadith some of, on, he mentioned on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of the incentives for this mujahid. So for example, he said, uh, That we will get closer and closer to Allah, okay? That's one of them. The next one that we continue to get close to Allah until what? Until He will love us. And then after that, uh, He will protect our sight from looking at things which He doesn't approve of, our hearing from listening to things that He doesn't approve of, our hands from touching things He doesn't approve of, and our legs from walking in the direction of things He doesn't approve of. So these are some of the incentives for this mujahada. Why should we do it? What do we stand to gain? What's in it for us? This was the answer in that hadith. In this hadith, the hadith of Abbasin, the Prophet is informing us that this mujahada is not as easy as it may seem, or as easy as it sounds. Because there are obstacles to our, I'm sorry, obstacles along the path to achieving it. This is what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us. In so many words in this hadith of Ibn Abbasin, radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet in this hadith he mentions one of these uh, obstacles, tasrihan, explicitly. And he mentions another one, talmihan. He alludes to it or he mentions it implicitly but not explicitly. So the first one that he mentions of the obstacles to this mujahada, striving in the way of Allah explicitly, is human nature or human psychology. Basically, our mental state and our attitude when we are faced with certain circumstances, in this case, the circumstance of good health combined with free time. How do we behave? How do we react as part of our nature or part of our human psychology when we are, uh, when we are uh, in a state where we have both good health and free time, right? So that's one of the obstacles. How we have a tendency as human beings to behave when we're in good health and when we have free time. That's the first obstacle. And we'll talk more about that shortly. The second obstacle which the Prophet mentioned, Talmihan, implicitly but not explicitly, is the shaitan who manipulates us by using this psychology and this human nature that we have, these tendencies that we have against us, to his advantage and to our disadvantage and detriment. Tayyip. So the Prophet in essence in this hadith is warning us against these two obstacles. The obstacles of our own human nature, our own human psychology, and how the shaitan will use this psychology against us 
saying, Ya Muslim, Jahid Nafsak. Oh Muslim, struggle against yourself and force your soul into submission. Beware of the pitfalls that lie along the path or that riddle this path of al-mujahada and will come between you and achieving your objective. And beware of being tricked by the shaitan into not making good use of these two ni'm, these two ni'matan, good health and free time. So the prophet begins, he says ni'matan. He describes good health and free time as what? As two bounties or favors from Allah, two advantageous circumstances, right? And these two bounties, good health and free time, they require, the Prophet is letting us know, they require what? They require gratitude. They require appreciation. And they also afford us an opportunity to be grateful, to demonstrate our gratitude in a certain way. Because when you're healthy and when you have free time, you are not limited in the way that you can show gratitude. You can show gratitude to Allah in a certain way, in a specific way, which the Prophet is alluding to, which has something to do with this bab that al hafal know we put this or cited this hadith under, which is the mujahada. When you are healthy and you have free time, that gives you an opportunity to thank Allah in the way He loves to be thanked. And that is by what? By worshiping Him. And doing more and more good deeds, whether those good deeds are recommended or required. That you can thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ta'a, with acts of obedience. So that's what the Prophet is telling us, that these are two ni'am that have to be thanked, and they give you the opportunity to thank Allah in the way he loves to be thanked, by obeying him and worshipping him, fulfilling his commands, avoiding his prohibitions, and drawing closer and nearer and dearer to him through these good deeds that we talked about, or we, we alluded to, or which were discussed, in the hadith of Yuhurira. Tayyib. But the tendency, the Prophet is indicating also, the tendency of mankind, the tendency of Bani Adam, the tendency of human beings, is to allow laziness, procrastination, to influence their decisions. Or to busy themselves with activities which are either not beneficial at all, or they are less beneficial than what? Than other activities, specifically these acts of obedience. So the tendency of man when he has free time and he has good health is to do what? To be lazy. To take it easy. And not to really take advantage of those two men. Or to procrastinate. Okay, I'm going to do something good, but I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. I'll do it next week. To put off tomorrow what he could do today. Or even worse, or another thing, is that man has a tendency when he has good health and free time to engage in activities which are totally not beneficial. Or they are less beneficial than what? Than activities like obeying Allah, drawing closer to Allah, etc. Consequently, what happens? People, before they take advantage of their good health, they end up getting sick. And before they take advantage of their free time, they end up getting busy. So the, and this is what the Prophet meant when he said, which are squandered by many people. Now this word that the Prophet used, مغبون, it can trace itself back to one of two words. The first word is الغبن. الغبن. بسكون and ba. So the ba in the word ghabn is sakina. And that particular word, it means to be duped, to be deceived, to be cheated, to be on the losing end of some type of transaction. Okay? Al ghabn. The other word is al ghabn, where the ba is mutharrika. It is what? It has a fatha on it, it's mutharrika instead of sakina, al ghabn. And that means to lack intelligence. A person lacks what? Intelligence. He's not very what? He's not very smart. And this word, maghboon, that the Prophet used in the Hadith, according to Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala, it could trace itself back to either one of those two meanings, or even both of them at the same time. And that is because when a person does not use the bounties that Allah has given him appropriately, he has cheated himself. 
So he's what? He's maghbun bimana al ghabn to be duped, to be deceived, to be cheated. And by doing so, by cheating his own self, he has behaved foolishly. So he is maghbun bimana al ghabn right? To, to behave what? In a way which is foolish? To lack intelligence. Let's say it another way. I'll give you a hypothetical scenario. There's a person who has a valuable commodity in his possession that he wants to sell. Obviously, he wants to get fair market value for that item at the very least and make some type of what? Profit. But at the very least, he wants to get what? He wants to sell that item, that commodity, for what it's worth. On the other side of it, suppose he wanted to buy an item. There's a person who there's a, there's, there's a particular piece of merchandise or item that he wants to buy. Well, he doesn't want to pay more for that item than it truly is worth. He doesn't want to pay, if it's worth $10, he doesn't want to pay $50 for it. He doesn't want to do that, right? If he sells the item that he has, this valuable commodity, he sells it for significantly, substantially less than what it's worth. Or he buys an item for three times, four times, five times its true value and worth, its market value. Then what will happen? What will people say? They will say he got beat. He got beat. He got taken to the cleaners, right? He got taken advantage of. And he'll be filled with what? Buyer's remorse. He'll be like, he'll be full with regret. Man, I feel stupid is what he'll say. And I got beat and I lost. I could have had this and I ended up with this instead. And that feeling of loss and regret is what is meant by what? Al-Ghabn or Al-Ghabn, right? So in this way, the Prophet ﷺ, when he says, مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ He's comparing each and every one of us, brothers and sisters in Islam, comparing us with a merchant. And he's saying that this health and free time, this is our merchandise, this is our commodity. This is what we're working with. And what we can use to gain what? To gain a profit, right? If we take full advantage of these two favors, health and free time, and use them to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will profit. We will get far more than the value of what we do and our commodity, the value of our commodity. We are going to win and not just win, we're going to win so many times over. We're going to have a winning wager, right? And, and you see this throughout the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about making a wager with him, going into trade with him and how we're always going to what? We're always going to win in the deal. We're always going to get more out of the deal than we really should get out of it, right? We're always going to win. So the Prophet is basically giving us this analogy, saying that health and free time, these are our commodities. And if we engage in a trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use these, uh, these ni'matan, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to, then we will profit. But if we squander them, we will be the losers. Either partly, we'll lose partly, meaning what? Our darajah, our place in paradise, will be lower than it would have been if we had used them appropriately. If we'd really taken advantage of these two bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and used them to profit in our trade, in our transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or we may lose totally in the hereafter, and losing in thereafter totally means that what? We may actually be what? Mu'addabun, because of our taqseer, because of our negligence, and because we didn't use these, ben ben of these bounties to our benefit at all, or to the level that would allow us to be what? To be saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attain salvation. طيب. Then the Prophet, he said, مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ Many people. Which means that this is the case for a large majority of the people because of what? Because of the nature of man, as we talked about in the outset. Human psychology, human nature, our natural inclination to be what? To be lazy, to procrastinate, and to busy ourselves with pursuits. Pursuits which have little or no spiritual benefit. This is our problem. We have a tendency to busy ourselves. If you look at your 24-hour day, we have a tendency to spend a lot of that time doing something which is not going to benefit us in the hereafter, and even worse, sometimes doing using that time in pursuits that will harm us in the hereafter. 
right? So we do these things which have little or no spiritual benefit. And the Prophet is basically telling us in this hadith, the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he's telling us, don't be like that. He's saying, yeah, Muslim. Yeah, mu'min. Most of the people don't take advantage of health and free time. Don't be like them. It's like you're walking down a path and you're preoccupied and there's a hazard in front of you. There's a danger. There's a big hole that you're about to fall into. And somebody's shouting from behind you, watch out for that hole. That hole can hurt you. You're going to be hurt if you fall into that hole. You're going to break a leg. You may break your neck. You may break your back. Watch out for that hole. The prophet is telling us most of the people don't see this hole. Look out for that hole. The hole of what? Wasting your good health and your free time. And another way he might be, the prophet is saying, he's basically saying, oh, mu'min, don't be fooled by the shaitan who actively seeks to make you squander your health and free time. Rather than use it for that which will benefit you. The shaitan doesn't want you to use your health and free time to benefit you in the hereafter, benefit you spiritually. So what does he do? He distracts you. He preoccupies you with other things. Many people fall for this trick from the shaitan. The prophet is saying, don't be one of them. And so this is basically the meaning of the hadith of Abbas and radiallahu anhuma. Ni'matani maqbunun fihi ma kathiru min al-nas as-sihatu wal-faraq. There are two advantageous circumstances, two blessings from Allah that most people squander, and they are free time, I'm sorry, good health and free time. What are the lessons, brothers and sisters, that we can take away from what we learned today? Uh, lesson number one, every ni'mah, every favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires appreciation, a shukr. It requires us to be thankful. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says, وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ He says, be appreciative and thankful towards me, and do not be ungrateful. Every ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to thank Him for it. Number two, the best way to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these ni'am, for these bounties and blessings, these favors, is through acts of obedience, whether they be required or recommended. The more we do to worship Allah, the more we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and showing, demonstrating our appreciation for His bounties. Number three, there can be no mujahada. This whole chapter is about what? Striving in the way of Allah. We can't strive and struggle in the way of Allah and in in Allah's cause without first waging jihad and nafs until we first struggle against our own souls and force our souls into submission. That's, what, that's where it starts and that's what the Prophet is teaching us through this hadith. That you're not going to be able to make do this mujahada. You're not going to be able to get those rewards we talked about in the hadith of Hurairah. Until what? Until you overcome your own self, your own tendency to be lazy, to procrastinate, and to busy yourself with activities which are not beneficial at all spiritually, or they're less beneficial spiritually than the than, than things you could be doing that you have that you have abandoned for the things that you engage in. Number four from the lessons. It is part of human nature to be given to laziness, procrastination, and trivial pursuits. It's part of our nature. Right? And it's something that we have to what? We have to oppose and fight and struggle against. Make mujahada against. Number five, the shaitan exploits these tendencies in us and uses them against us. And this is why it is so critical for us to take shaitan as an enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna, inna shaitan lakum aduun fattakhiduhu aduwa. Inna ma yad'u hizbahu liyakunu min ashab as-sa'ir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, Satan is an enemy for you, so take him as an enemy, which means that you don't you don't fall for his, you don't let yourself fall for his tricks. Take him as an enemy. He only calls those people who listen to him, who follow him, to be inhabitants of the blazing fire. And so, what does it mean to take the shaitan as an enemy? One, realize how he tricks you. Make yourself privy, educate yourself on madakhil shaitan. What are the things that he uses? What are the traps that he sets? What are the tricks that he plays? And this is one of them. Using our own tendency to be lazy and to procrastinate and engage in trivial pursuits, using that against us. Be aware of that. And number two, refuse to be taken advantage of by opposing him. I'm not going to do these things that are a waste of time. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm healthy. I have some free time. Let me use it constructively. Number six from the lesson. It is incumbent upon us 
to seize the opportunity afforded to us by good health and free time to do deeds that will draw us closer to Allah. Jalla Jalalhu Aduma as Sultanu. You have some free time, you have good health. Figure out, look at the different deeds that are available to you and do something. Do something for the sake of Allah. Don't waste your time and energy and effort and the free time and good health that you have at your disposal. Don't waste that in trivial pursuits. Okay, I got, I got, I, today I'm off. I'm going to memorize some Quran. Um, I was supposed to meet somebody at seven. They said they can't make it till eight. I'm sitting here at the masjid waiting for them to show up. Let me, um, let me go and memorize some hadith. Let me read some hadith. Let me read this book or a couple chapters of this book that I've been meaning to read. Do something constructive with the free time that we have. And last but not least, number seven. This is very, very important, brothers and sisters. Assess the benefit or lack thereof in our activities and minimize our engagement in activities of little or no spiritual benefit. Brothers and sisters, this is one of the struggles that we have, especially in the age of technological advancements, technology, right? Smartphones, right? You have the internet and so many other things at your fingertips. And so what do we tend to do? We tend to spend a lot of time on the smartphone. A lot of time just scrolling the smartphone on the internet, looking things up on the internet, watching things uh, on, on YouTube. And I'm not talking about like lectures and stuff. I'm talking about just garbage junk that's not really benefiting us and may even be harming us online shopping you know on amazon and on other sites just trying to see what we can buy and social media social media it consumes us and so if you were to sit back and do a um do an audit of your day and how much time you spend on that smartphone on the internet i'm sorry smartphone on the internet on social media, you would see that a huge amount of time of each day is spent wasted in trivial pursuits. And we have to be aware that this is the shaitan getting the best of us, taking us to the cleaners. Maghbunun fihima kathiru minanas. Squandered by most of the people. We're squandering these opportunities to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jalla jalaluhu aduma. Sultano. And so we have, I'm sorry, Sultano. And so brothers and sisters, we have to really assess, take a, you know, take a step back, look at how we're spending our day and our time, and do a better job of spending our free time worshiping Allah and drawing closer to Him. And there are so many ways we can do it. In fact, you can multitask. You can be doing something and worshiping Allah at the same time. So for example, dhikrullah, which is one of the best forms of ibadah. It's something that you can do while you're doing something else. So, for example, you go and you've got to pick up some things. You leave work and you got to pick up some things for the house on the way home. So you stop at the grocery store and you got to go and you got to get some produce. And you got to get a few things from this, this section and that aisle. Well, while you're doing all that, what's stopping you from saying, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah wa akbar. What's stopping you from saying, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. What's stopping you from doing that? You're standing in line waiting to get cashed out. What's stopping you from making dhikrullah? What's stopping you from revising Qur'an that you already memorized? So for example, let's say, for example, you memorized 10 ajza from the Qur'an. And um, so you, you make it a point to revise every day. And so if you're going to do one juice a day, that's what, uh, 20 pages a day? So while you're standing in the grocery line, you can be, low, with a low voice, you can be re revising, revising the Qur'an. You, you can, these are things that we can do and spend, and spend our time such that when we, when we come to the end of the day, we make that muhasaba. All of ourselves. How do I spend my time? You know, how much time do I spend worshiping Allah and doing pursuits and activities that will draw me closer to Allah? We can, we can, we can increase the amount of time. Also, we got to get off these phones, brothers and sisters. We got to get off these smartphones, get off the internet, get off social media. I'm not saying you have to abandon your accounts totally. But I'm saying how much time we have to minimize the time that we spend on these things and maximize the time that we spend drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some of the ways we mentioned and some of the ways that we did not uh, mention. Uh, so with that, brothers and sisters, we'll bring uh, today's session to a close. I want to say um, that if you're interested in seeing more content like this, um, I do have a, uh, a project that I'm working on with a few colleagues of mine. 
It's called Islam Asafi. We have a Facebook page, we have a YouTube channel, and we have an Instagram uh, account. And we've been posting uh, some videos. We're just you know getting started and getting the ball rolling. Um, but my content um, may not be here much longer. Uh, it may not be here partic particularly on the uh, the uh, Islamic Society of Central Virginia. That particular uh, Facebook page, my content might not be here much longer. So if you're still interested in seeing more content like this, uh, then look me up. Look us up at, at Islam Asafi. I will leave uh, a link to one of the videos in the, the comments section for those who are interested. And you can follow me there. Uh, so when this content is no longer available here, um, you'll see the content uh, elsewhere. And with that, brothers and sisters, we'll bring today's session to a close. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as always to bless your houses, to bless your spouses, to bless you and to make you blessed wherever you may be. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen to the talk and follow the best of it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who he teaches beneficial knowledge. And we truly allow us to benefit from that knowledge by making us from those who put it into practice. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak. Anabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.